I am AxelMC131 and welcome back to Minecraft and today I have something a little bit different to show you um, and today I'm actually on a survival world. This is actually a multiplayer um, survival land world that I play on with some friends uh, every weekend and I want to show you some of the stuff that we've been doing on it. Uh, this is our lovely little um, village over here. This is my house, little underground bunker built into the hill and we have uh, a couple of houses up <laughs> the top of the mountains here, near the portal, uh, a town hall which is a work in progress, some farms and such. Um, but I want to show you what I had been working on uh, in this for the last like week or two. Uh, and that is a mine track system that goes down to a mine shaft way underground down here. Uh, and I want to show you this because I'm quite, uh, quite proud of the redstone that I've managed to put together. Uh, and this system is basically an automated minecart um, transit system for both passengers and cargo. Not only that, it can distinguish between passengers and cargo and send them in two different directions. And I will show you how I've done that. But uh, first, I'll show you how this runs. So we're gonna we'll say I'll just put my armor back on just in case. We'll say that I'm going down for a day's trip to the mine. So we come into this uh, railway station. Passengers, this way, please. We're gonna jump into our passenger minecart here. Push the button, and it sends us down right away. And this goes all the way down to the mine shaft. Sorry about the loud noise, but there's the minecart sound. Here we are. So we've cleared out a bit of this mine shaft. It's actually huge, by the way, and it's also being mined by the whole of the community, so it's incredibly messy. But uh, we've done our best. Um, so this is like the uh, base station, as it were. Uh, and we already have a chest minecart down here, and that's already here for a specific purpose. Now, the way that we have here, this says cargo drop-off, if you're wondering, uh, is basically the way this works, is we have this chest up here and a hopper, and everything that we put into this chest here will get funneled down through this hopper into this minecart. Now, when this minecart fills up, or when, say, we have, you know, we've come over here, we have got a full inventory, we can load our inventory into this and into the minecart, and then go off and do another bout of mining, without having to go all the way up to the surface. That was the ultimate objective of this originally. Then we made it better, <laughs> and we made it better in quite a fun way. So this should now be full. Yep, we've got 32 cobblestone in there. Just say that that's like a day's work of mining. I'm going to chuck my minecart down there, hop in front of it, and you can't really tell, but there's the button behind there I can actually reach through the chest minecart. I'm going to push that, and it's going to send both of us up here. Now here's the cool bit. Once it reaches the top, I go one way, and the chest cart goes the other. So I've now stopped off back here again. The chest cart is now parked up here, and it is emptying its contents into this chest here. Not only that, once it is fully empty, it is automatically sent on its way again, and it goes all the way back down to the bottom. How cool is that? How cool is that? I mean, you can't get much, much better than that. I mean, this is, this is me working in survival. It's like... Incredible, and there's a zombie pig man around. Mm. We'll do something about you later, don't worry. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I put that together over a couple of weeks, and my god, i you have no idea how much I tore my hair out trying to figure out a way to detect if a minecart had a chest or a player in it. But I finally remembered something, and I cannot believe I didn't think of it before, but I'll show you what that is in another world. And what I have done is that in uh, another world... I'm, I'm, excuse me. Trying to do a video here. Do you mind? <sighs> we'll do something with you later. But, um, yeah, I've, uh, in another world, I have uh, basically replicated the system a little bit more neatly, uh, so I can show you what exactly I have done. So we'll switch over to that world now. All right, and here it is. This is actually all there is to it when you look at it. It's actually fairly simple in terms of the redstone involved. It just required an awful lot of mine track, and this is obviously a shortened version of what we have this is our, our um, railway station at the top, and this is our um, base station at the bottom of the mine. Uh, and obviously you, this is as long as is required to get up to the top and back again. So I want to show you the redstone that's underground in that system, and you can see immediately that there's a tripwire here, and that is my ingenious little method for detecting if a minecart has a player in it or not. And that is because if I grab a minecart and send it through, it will not trip off this tripwire. However, if there is a player in that minecart, then they will trip it off. And what you can just see there is that over a very short amount of time, oops, <laughs> uh, that tripwire 
when that's tripped, that actually activates this redstone signal down here, which is powering this redstone torch, and that toggles this railway from going to the, either the left or the right track. The yellow, by the way, I've color-coded this, green is for both lines, yellow is the cargo line, and blue is the passenger line. So if, you've, if you're getting a little bit disoriented by me turning around, just remember, yellow to cargo, blue to passenger. So basically what that means is that when the regular minecarts or chest minecarts come up here, they go to the left every single time, but when a player comes through here, it sends them to the right. And it's actually timed just right so that when you come up here with enough speed from the powered rails down there, you get flicked just to the right, and then it stops you immediately here. And this is where you would disembark. Uh, now the second part of this, I'm just going to show you by sending this little minecart up here. It's already got some stuff in it, and I'm going to um, send it up in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to show you what's going on up here. So up this side on the yellow track, this is where the cargo um, carts are coming up, so the chest minecarts. And here we have a detector rail, and this is timed just beautifully round to this corner here with a uh, redstone repeater and some redstone dust, and it's deactivating uh, this powered rail here. This powered rail is on by default, which means that any minecart that comes around here is just going to be sent straight through. Now, what we have here is that when a cart crosses over this detector rail, the timing on this, with that redstone repeater, is just enough that this turns off as the minecart reaches it. So it briefly pauses the minecarts that cross over that point. Now, the interesting stuff happens. This hopper here, which is going into this large double chest here, it has a comparator out the, buck, the back of it, which is also activating this redstone torch. Now, what that means is that if a minecart with a chest on it stops on top of this and then starts funneling items through the hopper, because the hopper will immediately try and grab anything from the inventory above it, if there is an inventory above it, um, this comparator will then activate because there are items passing through the hopper. That will then turn the re keep the redstone torch off even after this has been deactivated, and this redstone rail will remain off as long as there are items being passed through the hopper. <clears throat> that means that the moment that chest is emptied and this hopper no longer has any items passing back through it, this turns off, the redstone torch turns back on, and the powered rail is reignited, and the chest cart is sent back down to the bottom. And that is all that's going on. So I can show you this here. Uh, I'll start with it empty, just to show you off. So if we send it up here, I'm going to try and chase it up here, it's going to go to the left. You can see that turns off, and then it turns on again once it realizes there's nothing in it. So, if we instead fill it with items, for example, I've got some coal and some cobblestone, send it back up, now it's going to come up here, and it's going to stay there because there are now items passing through the hopper. And you can see that this comparator is now turned on, even though this is deactivated. And you can see these items passing through the hopper, filling up into the chest here. And as they funnel out of this, the moment there's no longer anything in the hopper, comparator turns off, torch turns on, powered rail turns on, and the minecart goes back down. So it's a little bit quick sometimes. It's actually surprisingly efficient. And the best bit about this is that it's actually timed well enough um, that if you put a player minecart uh, down on top of it, in fact, I believe it actually works no matter what order these come up in, um, it'll actually send them both up together. So if I put some rail in there, hit the button, just go to third person, as you can see, I go to one side, it goes to the other, because it's just timed well enough that, it's set that uh, this goes back to the default position after I've passed through it. So this is now emptying stuff into there, and you can see that the uh, moment that this is out, that turns off, and it is then sent back down to the bottom. And that is pretty much all there is to it. The redstone is actually incredibly simple. Other than the torches and stuff that are lighting this powered rail, the only things we really have is this trip wire here, which is only just like one piece of string, and then a little bit of redstone down to this torch. And of course, you will need to remember, if you're trying to build this in your own world, I'm not doing a tutorial, by the way, I just want to show you the method. If you are building this in your own world, you do need to take uh, account of which way this is by default. So which way your passengers are going to go, which way your cargo is going to go, because it will change depending on the orientation. Because uh, mine tracks have a weird default. I can't remember what it is exactly, but um, it relates to like the, I think it's like Northwest or something. I can't remember. There's, it's probably in the game files, but you can look for it. But keep in mind which way it's going to go. You can, of course, invert this if you wanted with another redstone torch. And then all we have over here again is a detector rail, some redstone running across here, and a repeater, and depending on how far away this is from here, and how fast your minecarts are coming up, um, then you can adjust your timing accordingly, and you can actually uh, have 
redstone torch going into this block, which then powers that redstone dust, which then powers that redstone uh, rail. And then again, the hopper right underneath it has a comparator going into the side of that block with the torch on it. And that's all there is to it. Well, after that, all you need to do is just build your um, walkway so that you can cross over. The little bridge, in fact, that goes from one side of the station in the uh, survival world to the other is actually crossing over that uh, tripwire. You can't really see it very well, but if I do something like that, you can sort of get an idea for how it works. Cross over to one side. Once you come up to the top, jump out of your cart, cross over here, and grab all your stuff from the chest. And it's as simple as that. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, I won't be doing a tutorial, as I said, on this. It's just a method, and it will deviate how you build this, depending on what your world is like. Um, but the next objective, of course, in the survival world is going to be to build another one of these at the bottom. Because if we do that, um, we can actually have a second one of these that goes up, but instead of having this unload, we will have a hopper and a chest on top of it so that it loads stuff. So if you can imagine that, this minecart will be constantly traveling up and around and down and around and up and down and up and down until we start putting stuff in a chest at the bottom, at which point it will stop, load everything it can from that, from that uh, chest, right up all the way to the top, and then dump it all in the chest at the top. And that means we could stay down in the mine for as long as we wanted. How cool is that? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is uh, all I have to show you guys today. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope you could take some useful uh, tips from this. And yeah, uh, so other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been XLMC131, and I'll see you next time.